Hello everyone, welcome back to the Tap and Sack Party. We've downloaded the latest Spellslingers update and that includes the green-white Drizzt from Dungeons and Dragons. He's all about casting legendary creatures so that you can summon Grinivara to attack as well. So let's see what this dynamic duo can do. All right, here we are ready to unlock Drizzt. I'm excited and want to see how good he is or maybe not so good and we're going to play lots of legendary creatures, so let's go ahead and unlock him. We shall be great friends, you and I. Right, Drizzt unlocked. Oh. Us, my friend. Cool animation. Let's see what he can do. All right, as this is a new character, I'm also quite unfamiliar with it. So let's go in through his basic abilities and signature cards. So he has a 26 health, which is not too bad, not the lowest, but not the highest as well. But his main ability is to summon Gwen Hyvar when you attack with one or more legendary creatures. So after the panther deals damage or dies, I guess he will become, the, the creature will no longer be a creature, so it will be summoned back into its own special zone. So basically you want to be casting legendary creatures so that Gwen Hyvar will come out and deal damage. So Gwen Hyvar is a 0-2 creature with Trample and gets plus 1 plus 0 permanently every time it attacks. So the first time is going to be a 1-2 and then if you manage to cast it more times it's going to be 2-2, two, 3-2 two, 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 and this will keep on growing the more legendary spells you cast. For Drizzt, his deck can only have a total of 6 legendary creatures but you can have any colors in it. And 6 legendary creatures doesn't sound like a lot because imagine if you're only casting 6 legendaries then Gwen Hoivar would only be a 6-2 which is, which is good but it's unlikely you can cast all 6 uh, legendary cards in your deck. So I think some of his signature spells will help to accomplish this and let's take a look at the first signature spell. Alright Hero's Call, the first signature spell for Drizzt is a 3 mana spell. You can draft a legendary creature and add it into your hand and you reduce its cost by 2. So normally legendary creatures are quite expensive so reducing that cost by 2 is great and this also means you can add another legendary creature into your hand in addition to the 6 that you might already have in your deck. So this is going to add on to Gwen Hoivar's uh, power later on. The next signature spell is Drizzt's Herald. It's a 3-2 creature for 2 mana. So okay stats but when it comes into play a friendly creature becomes legendary. So this is great because you can put in bigger creatures that are non-legendary and then Drizzt's Herald will turn it into a legendary and when that legendary creature attacks then Gwen Hoivar would come in and attack as well. So you're getting a lot of value of one Herald and this is also another way to give more legendary creatures into your battlefield. And the last signature spell for Drizzt is Defend with Twinkle. It's a 2 mana spell in green-white, so give a friendly creature plus 0 plus 2 and ward. So add a strike with icing death to your hand, and strike with icing death is another spell. So 2 mana, you get to stun an enemy creature and give a friendly creature plus 2 plus 0. So quite a lot of value there, basically you have to cast this first to buff the toughness of one of your creatures. It's more like a protective spell, maybe to use for defending, and then you also get another spell to cast on the same turn or the next turn and this time it's a, it's a more offensive spell you're stunning an enemy creature so that they can't block and then you give one of your friendly creatures plus two plus zero so if you have a legendary creature on the board and you give it plus two plus zero and attack that's going to be more damage and Gwen Hoivar will also be able to attack. Alright deck building rules as we mentioned you can only use white green and colorless in this deck because Drizzt is a green white hero but you can have a total of 6 legendary creatures of any colors. And the rest of the deck building rules are the standard 30 cards in the deck and 2 copies of any card except legendaries. Okay, so I'm assuming you're going to add in all 2 copies of the signature spell, so we're just going to do right that right now. And then we're going to have to pick some legendary creatures, um, which I don't have all of them because my collection is still growing, but we'll see what we have and then we'll add it in. Alright, so how do you tell whether a creature is legendary? You have to click into the card and it will say here on the right or I think in mobile it will be at the bottom. It will say legendary limit 1 per deck. It actually doesn't mention it 
on the card itself, which I find a little weird. Maybe they should use a symbol, an additional symbol to state that it's legendary. So my plan right now is to find the cheaper legendary creatures to cast because if we're going to just put in the expensive legendary creatures in the deck and have six of them, even if we get one in a hand or two in a hand, we're not going to be able to cast it. And the whole plan I think for Trizit is to be able to cast your legendary creatures quickly so that you can uh, be more aggressive and attack with uh, Gwen Hoivar as well. Okun the Crusher seems quite decent, 3 mana for 3-4, I use this in my red Chandra decks a lot. It's got nice stats and it will grow bigger if the opponent can't deal with it. So I think I'll just add one in and we'll see how it goes. Alright, Nif Mizzet the Fire Mine. I wanted to make use of this in a blue-red deck, but I realized it is really expensive for 7 mana. Um, it can help you turn the game around as a blocker and make, help you draw cards. So that might help you find a solution, but it is quite expensive. But we're going to put one in and see whether we get to cast it at all. I quite like Gorm the Great. It's 5 mana for 6 5 trample. And what I like about him is that he can give you another card if he deals damage to an opponent. And that card is Grudge Match. Grudge Match is a fight spell, which basically means it's a kind of removal for opponent's threats. So I like that he already has trample with 6 power, so it's almost a given that he's going to be able to deal combat damage to the opponent, and I think that's why I would try to put one in here. Okay, Zozu. This guy is really explosive when you, he comes in with haste, so he can attack right away, and he gets plus 1 plus 0 for each opponent's mana gems. So generally, he gets more power the later in the game it is, because they have more mana gems, so if they have no blockers, you can surprise them with a potentially 7-4 or 8-4 with haste. And the good thing is that since it's attacking, it will also trigger Gwen Hoivar, so I think I will try to add one in here. If there's one legendary that seems quite good for Drizzt, I think it's Virtus the Veil. It is a 4 mana, 3-4 with sneak. So basically, it can attack once for free and you don't have to worry about their blockers. And when it damages, damages the opponent, you get a silent strike into your hand. So it's a free spell. Well, not free. It's a 4 mana spell. Uh, but you get it into your hand and it gives a friendly creature plus 2 plus 0 and sneak. So you can cast a silent strike back on Virtus for double sneak. And this also lets you attack with a legendary creature, thus triggering your Drizzt's ability. Okay, so we've got four, 6 legendary creatures now. And I think we can start to look for the main... Uh, deck, the main build. So between Watchwolf and Colonian Tusker, I've always been using Tusker, but maybe this time I'm going to try Watchwolf to see if that extra toughness uh, makes a difference. The reason why I use Tusker before is because I usually prefer to be more offense oriented, but I think with Watchwolf, maybe this would give us a chance to sit back and wait for our legendary creatures to appear. I'm adding two copies of Worm's Wake into the deck because I think for its stats of 5-5 for 3 mana, it's good. Um, it's going to be very aggressive and that's what we want our Drizzt deck to be. The downside of this is that it's a trap, so you're not getting that creature until the end of the opponent's turn. And if they have a hasty creature, this Worm is not going to protect you. So there is a drawback, but otherwise, if they're not doing anything, then 3 mana for a 5-5 five five is good value. Even Torga is an interesting card because it can give another friendly creature flying for one turn. It's especially good in Ajani's uh, deck, which I use as well, but maybe it'll work here in Drizzt as well, since a lot of our creatures aren't flying, so maybe being able to give them flying for one turn could help us to win the game. Predator Ooze, so this guy is all about attacking, you just want to attack with the Ooze and it, I think it kind of fits in with Drizzt. Sometimes it's not able to kill off the opponent's blocker but it will damage it and you do get another Predator Ooze to replace it. So it is quite annoying to deal with. For our land we could go with the tried and tested Deep Forest Arena which has proven to be quite good in most decks either in Vivian or Ajani because it gives uh, one of your creatures plus 2 plus 2 and ward. But the downside is that you might be actually wanting that extra mana, but instead you're getting um, a buff. So this could backfire in some ways, but otherwise it is a nice way to buff your creatures, especially in creature heavy decks like Drizzt. All right, we kind of have a deck with um, our six legendary creatures. We have not play tested this deck yet, but we're going to play some games now and see how well Drizzt fares against the competition. 
Of course, we're up against the mirror match with another Drizzt, because everyone is probably going to be playing Drizzt for the first few days. Um, so we have a starting hand of Watch Wolf and two legendary creatures. It's not bad. Um, why not? Let's just try that. It's going to be a bit slow, but hopefully the Watch Wolf would help defend. And they have a skill class, which is a new card from the latest expansion. Uh, I don't have any skill cards now, so we'll just have to make do. Wow, Sun Empire Brawler attack is plus one, plus one. Okay, there's nothing that we can do except cast the Watch Wolf and pass the turn. Regenerate. Gives it plus one, plus one, and fully heal this. Let's just attack and see what happens. Okay, naturally they're not going to block. So I could cast Hero's Call, draft a legendary creature, but I think we have enough legendaries for now. So maybe we'll just um, do the Wormweight Trap, get a 5-5 five five at the end of their turn. Oh, Blood Queen Drana. So that is their first um, legendary card on the field. Maybe just for fun, we're gonna just cast Zozu and see how uh, the Panther does. Alright, so we've got the first appearance of Gwen Huivar. Trample 1 2. And as expected, the trade with the. Uh, yep, the brawler. Drana's still alive. And let's see what happens then. So they're gonna attack with Drana, and they also will be able to attack uh, with the Panther, which is this nice little uh, statue here. Oh, it's, I gotta end turn. So. Oh, Stoneforge Mystic. That's a good card. Plus four, plus one. Wow. Um. So I definitely should block when Huivar. I think we can take one on the worm. I hunger. All right, path to exile is looking great now. The problem is that we can't do anything else. So we're just going to kill off Drana and just attack. Pass the turn. Down to 6 life. Um, so even tour guide might be useful here. We can give uh, one of our creatures flying. But Next turn, if we get up to 6 mana, then we can do two things, cast Hero's Call and Worm's Wake. Okay, alright, that is a lot. What is this? Level up. Debut, give a friendly creature plus 0 plus 1, and they get the spell. The next spell is Aura of Courage. Okay, so the attack with the 4-7, which doesn't make sense to block, I think. Yeah, alright, let's pass. So if we risk it all on the Virtus the Veil with Sneak, we could win if they don't get rid of Virtus. So it's a bit of a risk. Alright, why not? Let's just go for it. Virtus the Veil. Uh, we're not going to attack because of that 4 7, so we just pass. Oop, I think we're going to win. It's been an honor. Be so Cortoped. Wow. And they deal 3 damage to yourself and give it plus 6, plus 6. Okay, but they have no blockers against Virtus, so... Managed to deal the last 3 damage. And that's our first win as Drizzt. Ooh, nice. 
Now we get to challenge Drizzit against a non-Drizzit uh, Spellslinger, and that will be Vivian. Alright, so we've got Overrun, that should go. And Quorum the Great might be on the expensive side for 5. So, alright, let's change these two. Okay, we have Hero's Call and Loaning Healer. These are nice cards. Well then, let events take their course. Tear it all down. Uh. Oh. Alright, this is interesting. So let's cast Leonin Healer. Heal ourselves for three. And if it survives, then the next turn we can cast um, the Herald to give it legendary and that will trigger uh, Drizzit and then we get a free attack. Oh no blockers, alright. Okay, so let's try this. Our first casting of Drizzit's Herald. We're gonna make a creature legendary and that's the healer. So now we can swing with the panther. Okay, not bad for a start, but uh, let's see what they have. Vivian's Arc Bow. Alright, I can't cast Virtus yet, only that's next turn, so we'll just attack and then... Oh, it is legendary still, it's not a one turn effect, so... Not bad, actually. I didn't realize that was a permanent thing. So now we're gonna put the trap for Worm's Wake and just pass the turn. Oh, the stag. That is a good, uh, good spell, good card. That's a good card that they cast. And gives an armor. Wow. So this is not bad. Defend with Twinkle, we can give a creature plus zero plus two and ward. And we add the uh, Strike of Icing Death, which means it can stun something. So we could stun the stag. But I think what I'll do is we could do 8 damage. I'm going to cast Virtus because I really want to uh, show Drizzt's abilities. So we're going to cast him and hope he stays alive. We we're just going to pass the turn. <laughs> Current Zikar! Wow, it's a new card. I Tyrant. So I guess plus 2, plus 2, and ward because of uh, that arena land. And it's gonna be big. Okay, so we could stun the stag. We can't stun the eye turn because he has ward. Hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna cast um, a twinkle. And I'm gonna cast the strike of icing death to stun the stag. And give a friendly creature plus two plus zero. So we give Virtus plus 2 plus 0, that's nice. And then we can swing in for all. So it's nice that we have an extra attacker. So even though they block see, one of the creatures, they're going to take quite a lot of damage. See, they're down the tree. That's nice. And we just have to pass the turn. So Silent Strike is great because it gives a friendly creature sneak again. And now with our... Oh, they brought back Virtus. Okay, but that's not a problem. We still have... Um, we still have the Worm that can give sneak. Okay, yeah, we won. So actually, they had Eye Tyrant, which is a legendary, I believe. But they, they're not playing Drizzt, so they don't get the Panther. Um, but for us, we were making use of the Panther attacks quite a lot, and I think that shows the power of Drizzt. So I have to say, so far I'm quite impressed with Drizzt when you are able to cast those legendary creatures and attack. That Panther, Gwen Hoivar, really does uh, do some damage. It gives you an additional block, uh, additional attacker, and even though it starts off with only one power and then two power, but even if it dies, it would still be alive, uh, being able to cast again the next time it attacks with a legendary creature. So it seems like it puts the opponent in a in an awkward position, whether to actually block the panther or not, or block one of the other creatures. And generally, legendary creatures are quite strong, so 
they may not be able to deal with it. The problem I foresee with Drizzt is that they don't have, if you don't have legendary creatures, then it's going to be a problem. Or if you put all your legendary creatures as expensive cards, they're not going to be able to cast them early on. So I think being, uh, being able to cast it early on is a key component for Drizzt. If you want to win, then you've got to be aggressive. Uh, you've got to make your stuff legendary, either with the, the Herald or with your own legendary creatures. Then you start attacking in and then use other cards or spells um, to support that strategy. So in green-white, the good thing is that you've got lots of healers, uh, you do have creatures with reach that can block flyers, and your removal spells are also quite good options. You've got fight spells on green, and on white you have spells that can deal, that can destroy a creature directly. So quite a lot of options, uh, I would say, for green-white. And now being able to be more aggressive, faster than, for example, Ajani or Vivian. So Drizzt could be good if you have the legendary creatures. Alright, so that's it for our introduction to Drizzt. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do subscribe if you want to watch more Spellslingers or other magic stuff. And leave a comment, tell us what you think of Drizzt. And if you have a deck list, uh, do share it with us as well. We want to see how you, which legendary creatures you're playing. Maybe it will be better than what we have. Um, if you want to check out more Magic the Gathering content, also go to our website at tapandsec.com. We have more strategy articles on all things magic. So we're tapping out now. Have fun on the weekend. Take care and see you guys next time.